little bit. Um, now, whenever I have like a weather event like that that I need to figure out, like I'm a big proponent of strictly using NOAA data. Why is that? Because it, they're the one who are actually collecting, uh, putting those data together, and they, they're the source of all weather data that you can probably find about anything going on weather-wise in North America. So I'm basically in favor of uh, looking at the source. And what are they saying right now is, uh, see tonight, southeast to south wind, 10 to 15 knots in my area. Then tomorrow, southeast, 10 to 15, waves 4 to 6, becoming 15 in the afternoon. Tuesday night, east wind, 15 to 20 knots. Wednesday, east wind, 20 to 25 knots with 9 to 13 feet swells, 7 to 10 feet swells. That's kind of big. That's big. Um, and then Wednesday night, 25 to 30 knots. So I'm pinned down here like till Thursday night at least. Uh, Friday still kind of big. Uh, wait a second. What do we see here? Up, just up to the north. See, that that's part of my decision making here. I'm, and when you look at PMZ uh, 021 and PMZ uh, 019, uh, La Paz and La Paz Harbor are in PMZ 021. So the storm is forecasted to be less bad in the southern area because I'll show you on the other chart there, it, it's kind of turning away and then turning back into Baja California. So this storm is going to be worse towards Loreto and towards the north. And I mean, everything plays in, in, into consideration. Like I had the option, I had the time, although I couldn't find a marina in La Paz, I had the time to go back to Loreto, but it looks like the storm is going to be not as bad towards the southern portion of the peninsula. So I'll take that over going back to, let's say, Loreto, uh, Puerto Escondido, which is as far as I could get before the storm hits and being in that lagoon at Puerto Escondido, which would work also. I mean, I would, I would feel safe there also. Uh, it's just I feel the storm is not going to impact the southern portion of Baja California. Not I feel, I read. I'm reading right now that it's not going to be as bad on the southern tip of Baja California as it will be up north. Uh, I say I feel because I'm reading it. I'll show you another part of the briefing here. So again, strictly NOAA data. I don't go anywhere else. I, I, I understand people want to have as precise of a forecast as they can. I just feel like when this is a feeling, this is a true feeling. When when people start going into all kinds of algorithm and all kinds of uh, weather data, grip, the so and so, this dude does a good job. This other dude doesn't do a good job. Stick to NOAA. You can't go wrong. Like they they have the the best forecasting ability for uh, for this kind of stuff. So this is what I mean. So the storm is here right now. It's gonna veer towards the Rivila Guigados and the Socorros here. And it's gonna be kind of well offshore of Cabo and then it comes back in. So it will, when it's here, so that's 6 a.m. Thursday, it will have an effect here, but I'll be away from most of it all. And then if there's any clearing in there on the night of uh, September, I have a slip that's opening up, not a slip, uh, a, a dock space that's opening up at Marina Cortez. So all this is playing into uh, my mind as I'm doing all this. And uh, so next I'll show you my, uh, so th this, this played into the decision into getting to Isla Partida just north of uh, uh, Espiritu Santo and anchoring out in uh, Ensenada Cardonal. Uh, I'm the only boat here, which, you know, could be a bad sign. It could mean that I've, I've got this wrong. Uh, but if it's a south early wind, I'll show you on the map here. So, so it's south to southeast, they're saying. So if it's south, the bay I'm at here is this one. So if it's strictly south, there might be some swells coming in there, crashing in there and echoing towards me. I'm about here. So if it's really south, but the, the forecast says southeast, so it should be in that direction. And I shouldn't have like there's going to be all kinds of wavy action here for sure. 
the question is how much is that going to impact that wall here and come back to haunt me right there where the other option would be to, to be in Ensenada Partita which obviously like if it's south south like there's less of a potential to be hit here if you're anchored nestled in here but it's kind of hard and there's already a lot of boats here so so probably if I'd go now I'd be I'd be stuck in here which is not bad uh, but you know uh, I, the other thing is you know other boats could be a danger like I'm fine being alone in a bay for this kind of stuff because it means that you know there's less chance that a boat is gonna get off the hook and come and hit me later um, so anyway uh, nothing's perfect the perfect situation would have been to have a slip in Marina La Paz that's not what I got I don't have a perfect hand on this but I'll play the cards I got the wind just switched to the north it should be east southeast so it should be coming from from there where the mountains are I'm in Ensenada Cardinal I'm in I'm the only boat here uh, <laughs> which that's not a good sign uh, and it is a good sign in some ways I mean I don't like uh, Particularly when the, the conditions are going to be bad, I don't like to be uh, around a lot of other boats because not everyone has a good anchoring setup for the kind of conditions that are coming right now. So I'm boat prepping for uh, uh, Hurricane uh, K. I've called every marina in La Paz, like all of them. Costa Baja, Palmira, Cortez, Marina de La Paz, Fonatour. Um, the smaller ones in there, I don't even have the phone number, but I kind of know what the answer is going to be. Like, they don't have room for me, which is not fun. Right now, it's sunny, quiet, um, no problem. Uh, pretty much a cockpit setup. Um, some nice straps here for the dinghy. I'm going to put a line around the bicycle there to make sure that it doesn't fly off. But this here, my Dodger Bimini, you see I have a link between the two of them that actually got torn off in the uh, previous tropical storm, Ravier. It's not because the storm was super intense, it's because this thing was old and uh, you know the, the storm maybe was 30 miles, 35 knots around there. So that, that whole rig, well, tough a lot more than this, it, it just snapped off because it, it was old. Um, so I'm just prepping. I, obviously, the blue bag there is gonna go. The main thing I'm gonna do for this storm, I'm in Ensenada Cordonal here in about 25 feet of water, which is like, and it's a sandy bottom. I've I've dove this place before, so it's super sweet. Uh, of course, the Starlink is not gonna stay there for the whole storm, uh, obviously. Uh, Though I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to strap it, and, but I don't see how it can hold 16 knots of wind standing there. Um, and this is it. So I've already have my main anchoring set up. So I went to my line here. So there's 200 feet of good chain on a 44 pounder Rocknov Vulcan, which in itself the chain is brand new. That line it looks uh, torn, but it's it's in good state. Um, just that is enough to to hold this boat in uh, in the kind of condition that I'm going to see, but just not to take a chance. This is a Delta 35 pounder. It's got 50 feet of chain on it and about 150 feet of. Uh, I mean, it's an old line, but it's it hasn't been used that much, so it's kind of in a, a good condition. So when, uh, when the wind direction is correct, I'm gonna just take the anchor, chuck it off the side and well, maybe like move the boat up to the wind at an angle in order to deploy this other anchor in a Y intersection. I could do this now with the dinghy, but before the wind direction is, is established, it's kind of pointless to do that and it's just gonna get entangled. So I want a nice clean unentangled Y when the wind hits. And uh, this uh, should hold me the 60 miles per hour wind that they're forecasting. Should come tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, so, and we'll just weather the storm here. And, uh, and then I have a slip in La Paz on the 9th of September when the storm clears, I hope.
I hope the storm's going to be cleared by now. Uh, by then, um, nothing's for sure right now, but we'll see. Of course, if it's still not good condition on the night, I'm not going to go. I'm just going to wait here till till it actually clears out. The other situation I'm dealing with is uh, I'm running on less than half a tank of gas, uh, diesel right now, so I don't have a lot of diesel to fight the weather uh, and navigate if I need to. I don't have a lot of uh, diesel to generate electricity if I need to, so you may have heard the noise there. I'm running the water maker in order to generate the water right now while I have some sun to power all of this. Um, when the sun goes away and the clouds move in, uh, then I'll be on the, on the water that I'll have and uh, we'll go from there. I can load shed a lot, like there's not a lot of critical system on board right now. Like the fridge even can be load shedded. Uh, and when the sun comes back and we fire up the diesel, we'll have some power again and I'll, I'll be able to give you another update if, uh, if, I, if I was on the dark side of the moon for a little bit. So we'll see from there. But I have full faith this is going to work. Uh, yeah. 60, knot, 60 miles per hour of wind, 55 knots. I've actually hit that first season I owned the boat in 2013 off the coast of Georgia, offshore with 20 foot seas. So I'm not worried about that weather in that bay. I wish I could have had a slip in the past. I, I would have preferred that, but you don't get slipped that easy these days.